All righty. Good morning, everybody. Happy, what is it, Tuesday? Tuesday, November 8th. That's right. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Um, perfect. Well, thank you all so, so much for joining us today. We're going to, I know some people are going to keep, keep running in here a few minutes, but we want to respect uh, this powerful hour for you all and get rolling because it is jam packed with a lot of good information. Want to give plenty of time for these uh, amazing panelists, attendees to show you, you know, some of these tricks of the trade here, these products that we want to, we want to show you all and um, give you all a little bit of time for some Q and a potentially as well. Um, so to officially kick things off, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Will Burnham. I'm the Deputy Director of MLS Services for ABOR. And this is the final MLS Power Hour of 2022. It's hard to believe we are just rocking and rolling. Um, and we know the market is, is changing day by day. You need to be on top of your game when it comes to the software and tools that you use. And if you're out on the road showing clients properties, we know that you need to have reliable and timely Central Texas market data at your fingertips. Uh, and if you're trying to strengthen your client relationships and hone in on lead generation, we're also going to show you a great resource for that during today's Power Hour. So touching on those two things, today we're going to first show you uh, how to maximize, oops, maximize your mobile and client experiences um, through the newly improved RPR mobile app, and then pivot to Remind Pro on desktop to give you that client engagement and build some, uh, build some of that knowledge in that arena for you. So to kick off the hour, I'm going to introduce Reggie Nicolay. Uh, he is RPR's, uh, excuse me, RPR's Vice President of Marketing. I'm going to do a quick bio here and then turn it over to him to, to start his demo through the app. And uh, Reggie is the Vice President, excuse me, is the Vice President of Marketing at Realtors Property Resource, RPR, the national property database for realtors. He is responsible for brand monitoring and social media strategies and many other marketing responsibilities. He moved to RPR from Real Estate Search and valuation site cyberhomes.com, where he served as a social media director. Reggie was named one of the 100 most influential leaders in real estate for 2010 by Inman News. He also previously served as a web producer at internet startup markettools.com and regional director for Fidelity National Financial. And on the side, Reggie is a PC junkie. He enjoys building computers, loves code, and so he says he will not convert to a Mac. Uh, we'll see, you, Reggie. Everybody's everybody got a breaking point. Uh, so thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us and our subscribers today, Reggie. I will fade in the background here and turn it over to you. Uh, thank you so much. It's great to be here with everyone today. And yeah, let's get in and take a look at RPR, the RPR mobile app, and talk about how you can take your, your MLS data out in the field with you to engage with clients. So I've just got a few talking points I want to go through before I actually share my uh, app here for you all. Um, starting with the fact uh, I've got a couple things here in the outline we're going to look at. There's the intro of the mobile app. We're going to look specifically at different ways you can search, including using the map search, all the new filters and tips that we just recently uh, introduced into the app. We're going to take a deep look at the property details page and even look at some of those specialty features around CMA and buyer tour. So, and then the, of course, there's an output of different Different reports we'll get to take a look at um, and to level set in case you're not aware. Um, RPR is a member benefit. We're a national property database with residential and commercial properties. We interface with MLSs all across the country, just like yours, and basically surface this information on your phone. And um, it's built for you, for realtors. There's no additional charge. It's covered in your NAR member dues. And there's no consumer access to RPR. So you are the gatekeeper to all this information. Um, you're going to get it from the App Store or Google Play Store. Um, you can download it anytime. It's ready for you. And as we get going, I just wanted to mention, so um, we did in this latest update, we did just add some new fields on the lease side that were not there previously. On the left column, you can see some of those. If I have enough time, I'll pull up a lease property and show you, but these are now in a lease details section on a property. So um, pretty great information. Now let's go ahead and go live. So let me just pull over my device here. Give me one moment. Here we are. I hope you can all see that. Okay, so here we are. We got the mobile app up. Notice I've logged in before, and when it knows who I am, it will actually add your branding there at the top. In this case, you can see Austin Board of Realtors and Actress MLS. So then I just uh, simply put in my password, which I have saved, and then I, I'm logging in. 
I get my quick little splash screen here. Now, something about RPR Mobile that's a little unique is it's very location aware. So what I see when I first come in is the activity around me. Notice at the very top, it says properties within half mile of me. Now this is configurable by going into settings and we'll take a look at that in a minute. Um, you may want that a larger area or you might like it just where it's at, but what it's telling me right now is that a half mile around where the phone thinks I'm standing, I've actually fudged my location. Um, there are 16 homes for sale five lease properties, six of those new new for sale properties just came on the market. We got two new for lease and 24 that recently closed. Um, if I was to tap into any one of those sections, I would be looking at just that data set and we'll actually do that in a minute. But before I do, I want to also point your eyes to the bottom of the screen where I see reports, recent and saved. So no matter where I am in the app on the home screen, I get those buttons. So at any point I can kick off creating a report, I can look at my recent viewed properties, searches, et cetera. We'll do that in a minute. And then I can look at my saved properties, even if I saved them from the web website. Now, if I swipe my screen to the left and I can do this three times, the middle screen shows me local market conditions. And it's really at the zip code level of where I'm at. But here I can see some of those metrics. And then I can go ahead and, and that I see a question. How did I get to that first screen? It just loaded up once I logged in. Uh, that's just the first thing you're going to be presented with. And then if I swipe to the left, I get to this screen. And if I swipe one more time, I actually just have a search field as a screen where I can also search my own listings and I can do an owner name search. So I basically have three home screens. One shows me activity around me. One shows me the local market conditions and one has a search input, kind of depending. Maybe I don't want to see a home right next to me. I want to search out of my area. That's when this field is going to be very handy. So now going back to the very first screen, um, I mentioned that these statuses um, are within a half mile around me. One thing I want to point out is if I click the cog on the left side of the screen there, it pulls up my user profile area. And from here, I can actually change that radius. So notice if I come over here and I do user settings, I can I have a little slider right here and I can actually change the distance that the app is going to look on the home screen. So right now I have it at two miles and I can go up. And in my case, I actually fudged my location to say Barton Hills in Austin, Texas. And then I can also change, if I would like, some of these other time frames, like how long should a new property uh, be lab uh, labeled new in a residential? Um, how long should a closed property be labeled closed? Because remember, RPR has both on-market and off-market data through public records. So once it stops saying closed, it will just move to a public record property that had closed in the past, as you'll see. So pretty, pretty straightforward stuff here. I'm going to go ahead and back out of this, go back to my home screen. Now then, um, let's go ahead and start by... Let me start by going clicking into a couple of these filters and show you how the map works. So... If I was to click on the for sale 16, it takes me to a map view showing me those 16 properties. Now, um, basically think of it as like a filter has been set here. So there's the 15 properties. Oh, it's actually 16 in this particular case. Oh, it's because one's a, it's got two properties into that pin. So basically now what I can do is I can zoom in, tap on a pin if I wanna see that property. I can even scroll through some of the photos when I'm looking at my quick view. Or perhaps I don't like the map view and I want to move over to a list view and see all the properties that were displayed on that map as far as pins, then I can look at it this way and I can actually scroll through my list. So whatever preference is yours, I do like this view when I'm starting to get into details, uh, but the map view obviously is nice when you're trying to find a property near a specific location. Now, I want to point out that if I was, every time I move the map slightly, um, I'm going to get a redo search in this area at the top. See this little button right here? Right now, my search is being restricted by this shaded area. That was that half mile around me. If I was to redo search in this area, it's going to use this, what's displaying on the screen, and it's now going to give me different results. Watch, if I now search, it pops up whatever is in my view. If I move my map again and search, it's going to do the same thing. So you can really pan and zoom the maps and you can research all day long. 
But remember, we came in from the home screen with just looking at those newly listed properties. So remember, we are just seeing newly listed. Now I'm going to go back to the home screen really quick. And I want to show you the difference. This time, I'm going to click at the very top, right up here where it says Barton Hills. So notice if I do this, now I'm going to see all of the statuses. So it's mixing it with the new, the new for lease, recently closed, everything. Okay. And um, just like before, I can pan and zoom the map. But this, if you were looking in this view, I want to go ahead and introduce a couple things here at the bottom of the screen that can help me present the results a little differently. First of all, sort. If I'm looking in my list view, sort's really handy if I want to arrange the properties in some way like uh, highest to lowest in value or maybe proximity from me. So maybe I want to see, um, you know, the homes closest to furthest. I can go ahead and check that from here when I check proximity, but lots of different ways to source, I'm sorry, to sort this data. Now, um, in the last upgrade that Will just mentioned, it was really big. We rewrote the entire app. What we did was we brought in the, the filters that everyone really loved on the website. And now we have that granular control on the mobile app. So you can find the properties you're searching for quicker. Let me give you a first glance by tapping on filters. Now, the very top, I'm on the residential side. I could toggle over to the commercial side just by clicking here. Otherwise, I just start working my way down. Let's talk about what we see. So I've got my for sale, my for lease. I could toggle off for lease if I'm not interested in seeing that on my display. Come down to property types. I can go ahead and uncheck them all. Maybe it's just single family I'm looking at. If I scroll down past that, I can choose my statuses. Maybe I'm not interested in active under contract or pending. If I do want to see open homes, I can go ahead and toggle this on to yes. Coming down, we've got our sales price fields. I can put a min or a max or both. If I just put a max, it's going to search up to that number. Pretty straightforward. I can choose to do it on the price itself or on lot uh, price per square foot or living price per square foot. So that's pretty flexible from your standpoint. Um, we also, we lost this feature for a little while, but it's back now. We can search by the price according to the RVM. So is it uh, is the price under 80% of the estimated value? Is it 80 to 90% or 120%? You can choose the type of filter you're looking for. Um, you can go ahead and choose how many bedrooms or bathrooms. If you do want to select multiple, just go ahead and do it like that. Tap on those. They turn blue. I've got my living area, lot size, number of units, you're built. I can choose distress status. So if you're looking for distressed properties, go ahead and... Uh, Pick your pre-foreclosure, your uh, notice of trustee sale or auction or foreclosure. And if you want to exclude them, simply just choose exclude here. Otherwise, we go down, we can pick our standard land use codes. We can pick our ownership type, whether it's uh, occupied owner or absentee owner. Uh, if we want to search by an owner name, um, time owned, and even keywords. So maybe you want to find a home with a pool. Go ahead and type in pool here. Um, so those are the filters as we get used to it. Uh, once you use a filter, go ahead and click apply at the bottom. And you can also reset to go back to the default. Um, if you'd like to make this the new default, choose save as default. And then once I choose apply, I'll go back. Now it's got eight properties. I'll go back to the map view. There they are. And just like before, I could tap on a property. I could go to list view. Let me actually show you a couple more things here. If I am interested in one of these properties, I can go ahead and tap into it to view it in detail, which we'll do in a minute, or I can go ahead and click the little uh, uh, ellipses, I believe that's what there are, uh, on the right corner, and it flips the record around, and I can quickly create a report on the property. Maybe I want to create a quick property report so I can text it or email it off to a prospect. I can save it. I can go ahead and add a note. Maybe I want to add a photo note or a text note, um, something I noticed about the property, or if I'm maybe creating a report for a listing presentation and it's a public records property, maybe I want to add a photo, uh, have that photo even show up as the cover photo. I'll do that in a moment. I can do that all through here. Or call an agent. You're on the field and you need to get in touch with the listing agent so you can set a showing. Go ahead and tap call to agent. It executes that phone call right then and you're going to be connected. Um, let's see. Okay, so we got a little bit about the map search. We've looked a little bit at 
let me do this. Let me show you one difference now here on searching from the home screen. Remember at the top, it said Barton Hills in um, Austin, Texas. But I told you, I'm only searching one half mile around me. So when I come in, it's like a subset of that area. Okay, it's like this half mile. But if I went back to the home screen, tap the little search icon at the top and wrote in the neighborhood name. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and say Barton Hills. And notice as I start to type, RPR is going to find matches. In this case, there's Barton Hills in Austin, Texas. If I tap on that, it executes the search. And now I get the full geography for Barton Hills because I've kind of I've not gone through that half mile feature. I'm actually looking at the full geography. We're going to have uh, most known neighborhoods in RPR. So this will work on any of those known neighborhoods that we have. Put up the geographical shape. A couple things about this shape. If I want to zoom in, no problem, okay? But if I was to, remember I told you about this redo search in the area right up here at the top? If I was to tap that now, remember how I said it searches using the frame of your map? So it would search this whole area. So unless I want to remove that boundary and search the whole area, don't tap that again, okay? Just simply pan and zoom as you need to. You can use your filters. Maybe you're removing those lease properties or whatever it is. Filter down to the ones you want. Get over to your list view. And then, of course, you can view a property. So hopefully that's pretty straightforward. And basically, you can, you know, I, I could try this one more time. Let's see. I looked up. There was another. I'll do Westgate just to show you one more. Westgate in Austin, Texas. And there you go. So. Okay, a couple different ways to search. If I find myself, maybe this is my farm area or I'm searching it all the time, go down to the bottom right and tap on this heart and you can actually save this search and then we can find it later. And you can give it a custom name or you can use the, the name Westgate in Austin, Texas. And I'll just say default. Now I've saved Westgate. Okay. And by the way, when I'm saving these, now it's a good time to show you that. I go on the home screen, I go to saved. And I can see all the properties I've saved and all the searches I've saved. Okay. So it's just as easy getting back into those as that. Just tap on one and it executes it or property. Okay. So now let's go ahead and look a little bit more at some of these map features in the map actions. So if I tap this area, I've got a few features that can help me zero in on the information I'm looking for. Number one, I can draw a search area. So if you're not finding a neighborhood match and you really want to isolate a specific area, you can tap draw and you can actually then just use your finger at any size and you can just draw on the screen. Okay. Uh, back to map options. If I want to do a distance search, maybe I'm interested in finding homes within a one or five mile radius. I can go ahead and tap on distance. And I can put the center wherever I want on the map. And I can go ahead and use this slider down here to change that radius. So I can pick the right radius I want to search and then apply. Uh, if I want to maybe change the map view, pretty standard stuff. I can look at road, satellite, or hybrid view. And then uh, I can see parcels. So if I'm interested in seeing at a parcel level, I just turned them on. Let's go ahead and zoom in here and redo a search here. Notice what happens. It puts these overlines on top of all the parcels. And when we zoom in very like all the way like this, notice gray pins appear. Now we're seeing every property that's off market. So we can, and that's the RVM value, the realtor valuation model. It's an estimated value. So when you see a gray pin, uh, it's going to either have the RVM, the realtor valuation model, or an AVM. If you see an AVM, that just means we are a little less confident in that estimated valuation. Maybe there's a piece of data missing that's important or whatnot. Um, that's how we, uh, that's one signal for you to know um, the estimation might be uh, a little off compared to, say, the RVM, which we have a higher confidence in. All those pins are clickable. If I tap on one, I'm going to see that off-market property there, and I can go ahead and tap into it. And you can go ahead and do that as much as you want. And then below that, I've got schools. Let me zoom back out. I'm going to tap on schools. So um, we work with Niche to bring in school data nationwide. You can search it uh, in any market. 
check the type of school you want to uh, showcase, the school level, elementary, middle, or high, and then go ahead and apply. Once you do that, I'll do it now, and that will show up here. Give me one moment. There we go. So notice these little, uh, I'll show you right here, these little caps showed up on the map at different points. If I was to tap on one like that, it actually added this geography. That's the school attendance zone, okay? So when I tapped on that, the school attendance zone popped up. Now I see the school's details down here, the school rating, and I can search properties in that attendance zone. I can create a school report right now, and I can go ahead and get driving directions. Um, all from right here. And then lastly, let me go back to map actions and I can do traffic. So um, very popular on the commercial side of the tool, but also helpful on residential. If you're looking for traffic patterns, like how much traffic are on some of the busy roads, that's what this feature does. Noticed when I added traffic, you can see these different arrows that match up with the volume of traffic. And you can actually see um, these busier traffic roads down here, like... Um, is it Menchaca? Am I saying that right? But it comes in here and it's got this uh, 15,000 to 30,000 daily volume. And if I tap on it, you'll see. Oh, I got a research right there. Give me one moment. There we go. You can see, oh, I just did too many clicks at once. It lagged for a moment. Give me one sec here. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and tap on that. And there you can see. This is the street, cross street, the actual volume. And I can scroll down here and see when it was updated, in this case, 2022. So those are our map options and uh, they're all available from that blue bar. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's dig a little deeper and let's look at a property. So I'm gonna turn off this traffic really quick. I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm just gonna pick one of these properties, okay. Let's look at this active property. This is a uh, three bedroom, two bath, 1700 square feet. Um, as I mentioned, I can go ahead and look at photos here, or if I just tap on the record, it's gonna open up and now I'm gonna see that listing record. If starting at the very top, the RVM details, and I saw a question I wanna re-answer. The RVM is the realtor valuation model, it uses um, uh, listings and sales in part of the equation. And basically, um, this confidence score that I just expanded is going to tell you how confident we are in that value. So if you see less than five stars, uh, we're not as confident in this, in that, that valuation. Um, you can see when it, it's range, you can see when it was last updated. As I scroll down a little bit, I can see the physical characteristics, how long the property has been active, how long it's been in RPR, this is a tool for uh, investment analysis. If you want to click through to it, it's a third-party tool. Below that, this is where you're going to get uh, all that information you're looking for coming over from the MLS. So listing agent, their phone number, email address, showing instructions, listing source, agent remarks. If I want to call the agent from here, I can go ahead and tap call agent, or I can go down to the bottom and tap here. Both do the same thing, okay? Okay. Um, Scrolling past the listing details, I can expand additional info to see uh, buyer's agency commission compensation. I can scroll past that and I can see the description the agent gave to the property. Below that, I get to see the neighborhood map. So here I can go ahead and see um, the neighborhood along with the ability to get driving directions. I can enlarge this map to go ahead and see it in more detail. Right below that, I can search for listings in this area. I can search for comps in this area, or I can actually create a CMA. It's like a, it's like a light version of what you can do on the website, but it's very similar. You go through each step and we'll look at it today if I have enough time. We go past that. We've got you know, directions to the property. Is it in a flood zone, the FEMA 100-year flood zones? We've got the walkability score. I've got the owner facts here. So you can see the owner name, uh, the mailing address. Is it occupied by the owner? We've got the property facts. If you know RPR, you know we often compare records of the same set. So if it's uh, in, in the case of property facts, you can compare the public records 
by tapping on public or the listing record. So you can see any differences. You can even add your changes. So if you preview the property and you notice something, you can annotate that here. That's only for your experience and for your reports, but it can be output on anything you create like a property report. Um, scrolling past that, we have a chart that shows the median estimated home value Keyword estimated home value plays off that RVM we talked about, and we can see how it compares with the zip code. This is a new uh, area right here, uh, and it matches the website, but we really do like how it turned out. It just gives you the, the changes of the price over time. So you can see the current listing. In this case, there was two price changes. Um, you can see it started there at that 139, and then it went down to that 1325. And then I can also tap over to the previous listing and I can see the home over time. So back in, um, what is that, five of 2014, I can see it closed for 497 and all the way through 10.22.19, okay? And then uh, below that, I've got my prior sales transactions for both the public and listing record. If I um, want, I can swipe to the left on this data here for the historical public records or I tap over to listing and I can do the same thing. But here I can see the uh, listing ID, listing agent, et cetera. And I can tap back through historical records. So all available on your phone while you're out there in the field. Below that, we've got the schools in the area. Go ahead and click through to those if you wanna create a report. We've got the AARP livability index. Um, this basically uh, rates every neighborhood uh, 50 is average, so everything above that is above average, and you can see all these different categories, the, the area is getting rated by housing, neighborhood, transportation, environment, health, engagement, and uh, opportunity. Of course, if you want to know more about that or look deeper, you can click through there. And then we've got the interior and exterior features of the home, legal description, uh, if you want to click through to the plot map, go ahead and tap there. It will open uh, a little PDF view of that plot map. And then at the end of this record, we're getting near the bottom here. I've got mortgage records along with historical mortgage records. I can go ahead and swipe to the right if there are more records and I can see the property over time. And then at the, as we round out this page, we've got the tax info. And again, if there's historical records of tax info, I can swipe that as well. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, let's, let's just say we want to create a report for this property. Um, we're gonna go ahead and click the reports button there at the bottom. So I tap that and then I get this little screen. I add report. Here's where I can choose property or seller's report. Oftentimes seller's reports are used when we create a CMA. So a uh, property report traditionally doesn't have one. Seller's report you would. Um, property flyer, it's a one-page flyer on the home. A lot of people put it in the, with the sign. Um, you got a mini property report. It's just really a condensed version of this first one. But it's, it, it can be about six to eight pages. So it's a, a slimmer one, great for someone previewing home. Uh, market activity report, it's going to show activity for a general area. Actives, a distressed, open houses, whatever it be, those statuses. Uh, school report, we talked about that, a buyer to a report, and a and the CMA, which is actually used with the seller's report. So for this one, just to do a quick, I'm going to do a mini property report. And then here's where I can customize it. If you've used the website, you've probably done this, but here I can say, uh, I, what pages do I want? If I don't want something, um, like let's say I don't want that AARP livability index, I could toggle that off like that or turn it back on. And then I simply go to the next page. Also, though, I can adjust my cover page the same way. You know, it's got your name, title, agent information, broker logo, website, et cetera. So you can toggle or change any of that. I'm just going to choose next. And now it's going to let me either download a report to my phone or email it to my client. Now, if I download it to my phone, I can text it out of my uh, system from the saved reports area. So that's one feature you get on the mobile phone you can't do on the website. Um, but otherwise I could airdrop it to my, uh, my computer, share it, Dropbox or whatever to get it off the phone. I'm gonna go to my, I'm gonna click this third button, view my recent reports. And that's gonna take me back to my report history. And you can see all the reports I've created and the one we're working on right now is finalizing. So I'm going to go into one I created on a previous day just to speed things up. I'm going to go to this one down here. It is in a different area, but let me just show you. 
If I click in, my report is there. And now I've got the report. I can go ahead and send this right now to somebody. I can airdrop it, um, like I mentioned, whatever I want. Okay, so now let me go back to the home screen really quick. And I wanna do a quick uh, CMA, just so we can show you that. I got about five minutes left here. So let's go ahead and I saved a, a public record property this morning. So I'm gonna go over to saved. And here I see it there at the top. By the way, I wanna show you one thing. When you remember when, when I said when you save a property, you can give it a name or you can take the default. In this particular one, I took the default, so it put the property address. And these two I saved for S. Smith. Let's say my, my buyer, Sam Smith. So when I saved it, I wanted them both referenced to him. So you can do that as well to make things easy to find. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click into this property. And we're going to do a quick CMA just so you can get a sense of that. So I'm going to scroll down right past this map and I see create comp analysis. There, just like the website, there's a few stages we work through. We first, oh, the report I created earlier. I'm going to say view later. Okay. So I can basically confirm the property facts. Then I choose my comps, make any adjustments, and then create the report. So here I can go ahead and see the public records of this home. If I see something's inaccurate, I can tap over to your changes. Remember we talked about this. I can go ahead and edit something. It's only going to change it for your experience, but that new data you add will be used in the valuation. Maybe you saw square footage is off. Um, since we're doing a CMA and square footage is going to be critical for the subject property, correct that in the your changes area. And then choose confirm, and that will take you to the next step. Step two, it's really all about searching for your comparable properties. This is when I would advise you to go into filters, you know, um, put in the criteria you're looking for. Maybe you don't want the lease properties to show up. You only want single families, you know, choose those settings now and then choose apply. And then I personally like to choose my comps from the list view. I just think it's a little easier to see. Notice that now every property has this add button. So I can, and I'm just going to uh, pick two for the for time here that are decent. Let's see, I'm going to go, I'm going to do these two properties. You're obviously looking at the physical characteristics here. Um, but I'm just going to grab those two for now. And then I'm going to go to the next screen. I've got two comps. Um, if I had picked four or five, they would basically show me two on the screen and I could swipe to the side. I can click this little drop down here and I can reorder them. So I can put the most the comps that I think are the best match up front. Down here at the bottom, there's a slider scale. I can actually, it's asking me, is this home better or worse than my subject property? It's a very quick way to do an adjustment, but you can use those slider scales as you see fit. And then we uh, write any notes and we go to the next step. Now RPR is giving us a price. That price, uh, if we did adjustments, I would it would have changed a little bit, but I can actually choose edit. And if I'd like, I could remove the price and just put in a range. So it's very friendly to what you want to take into that pricing discussion. Maybe you want to use the range to actually set the price with the seller. Go ahead and just enter in that range here. Um, otherwise, keep it as normal or refer, revert to the original if you changed it and want to go back. And then we hit save. Now we're ready to create that report. Here we are. It's creating a seller's report. And just like that, we'll be ready in a few minutes. I'm getting close to the end, but I want to do one more in a matter of time. I want to go back to the home screen and I want to do a quick buyer tour report. This is a new feature. Um, buyer tour is only available on the mobile app and it is the only report that you can add multiple properties to one report. So if I'm on the home screen and I tap reports, I choose buyer tour. Here, basically, I'm going to see all the homes in the area. I can go ahead and let's let's quick go into my filters. And I'm going to go ahead and take off those lease properties. I'm just going to do my single families. I'm even going to remove, well, I'll keep active under contract and active. And then maybe I'll just set my bedrooms at three, four and up. And then for a price range, let's go ahead and um, put in a max of one, four. I saw this area earlier. They're very nice homes. So I got in a few details to basically uh, give me more refined results. And then now, okay, I found the home. So I want to add to my buyer tour. 
let's just say these three here. I've got three to tour, three to tour. I go over. It looks like the CMA a little bit. By the way, I can also, if you found one in your MLS directly, you can add it by its address up here at the top. We just choose next one more time. You saw the options for creating a report. And then now we're going to create the report. Now it's going to give me a report with all those homes. It's going to give me uh, them in a vertical list view and a one sheet on each. So I can go ahead and send my buyer uh, to preview those homes. And I think I've run out of time. Uh, Will, if that's correct, is that about Reggie, right? You were right on the dot. Um, really, really awesome stuff. And actually, before you stop sharing, there was about 10 minutes ago, a couple of people did want to see one more time the parcel view where you could zoom in and see the RVM that's on there. So let's let's go that one more time and then we'll transition to uh, part two here. I would love to. So all I did was basically zoom in with my fingers. So I'm pinching and zooming. So I come in like this and I redo search and then they're all there. And then basically as you zoom in, you get even more alignment. And now I can just tap on any one of those gray pins and it's that easy. So yeah, the, the key is, Pinch and zoom, get in close to the maps. Perfect. Um, awesome, awesome stuff, Reggie. And, and you all had amazing questions. Big shout out to the RPR team for actually joining us too. And um, as you all saw, kind of this, this app is significantly updated recently. And, and just as importantly, in the last couple of months since we've gotten the update, the RPR team has been um, working hand in hand with us, getting our feedback, making more and more adjustments, improvements. We've learned a ton over the last year from you all about what you value the most in a mobile app. And RPR Mobile has been able to deliver that with this update and then some as we can continue to build. So they are super nimble. As you can see, the support is there 24 um, seven. Definitely rely on those resources. And as uh, we pinged in the chat, We'll have actually three, at least three RPR mobile trainings in December um, with our team. We have open labs with Jack Sellers, our trainers. So we call this a power hour for a reason. We get super quick, really in depth, just to show you the, the scope of really what's possible, just even a, a blip there too. But uh, there's a lot of opportunity for follow-up and this is just kind of tee it up and, and get this downloaded, get it back on your radar if it's been a while since you tried it or if, it's, if you haven't tried the new one or tried it at all. So a um, lot to cover there. And then yes, we are going to send a recording out of this, so so no worries there, and um, you'll have you can, you know, rewind and go through it all all that fun stuff. So um, thank you, Reggie, that was phenomenal. I'll let thank you stop you. sharing okay. your screen, and we'll um, introduce our next couple of guests here for the uh, last half ish of our power hour. Um, so again, thank you so much for that hands-on demo. RPR mobile team, the RPR team in general is phenomenal. Love working with them. Um, and if you haven't, again, if you aren't using RPR mobile already, go ahead and download the app. It's in either of those primary stores and get logged in. That support is there to help get a new password created, any issues there. Um, they're really, really hands-on and they'll get you where you need to be. Um, all righty. So now that you've seen firsthand how you can maximize your mobile experience, Let's talk about the client experience. So we're going to go from mobile to desktop a little bit, but another dynamic tool that's in your actor subscription and focus a little bit on client engagement, because as you saw with RPR Mobile, that's a very agent built, agent focused, a lot of client facing reporting that's really neat, but that app is for you all to use. This is something that we're going to build a client experience with RPR, I'm sorry, with Remind and get you set up on desktop and see what, what ventures in the future we can go from there. We're going to start small with just getting you a little bit of Remind 101 here. Um, so as, as much as realtors love RPR, clients do need an equally great experience when searching for listings and communicating with their agents. So today, Alan Rosnos, uh, Remind's customer success manager, is going to demonstrate how to use Remind Pro to engage and interact with your clients. Here's a quick introduction for Alan. So Alan is the customer success manager for Remind. He is born and raised Texan from Houston, and but has lived in Austin for a year. He attended Texas A&M, go Aggies, and Sam Houston State, earning a degree in communications and business. While he's fairly new to the Remind family, he has over 30 years in the real estate technology business, working as an account rep, trainer, support engineer, and product analyst. So we're going to turn it over to Reggie, and then actually, we're going to kind of pivot to a client to kind of give you a, it's going to be a slideshow because it's more difficult to switch to the 
uh, in the moment client view. We're going to give you a slideshow of what the client sees as you take these initial client setup, client portal setup steps in Remind. And Mandy Dennis, a phenomenal member of the of the Remind team, is going to show that. So I know it was much of an introduction for you, uh, Mandy, but uh, we'll let Alan get going here and uh, take it away. Thank you all so much for being here with us. Hi, everybody. My name is Alan Rosnes, and uh, I'm going to step you through uh, the client engagement. Click one thing here. All right. Um, what I want to talk about is uh, basically Remind makes interacting with your existing and prospective clients easy with uh, the feature we have called Engage. In Engage, you can easily invite your clients to Remind and view their activity. First thing I'm going to do is before you get started with Engage, you have to have your contacts set up. So we're going to step through that. Uh, hopefully, everybody can see my screen. There's two ways to input your contacts. It can you can either click on the engage button or on the contacts button. And I'll do the contacts button first. Okay, let me move some of this stuff around. Pardon me. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can either select your clients that you have entered into Remind, uh, one by one, do them one by one, or, you know, one, two, three, whatever. I've just got three in my system right now. Or, hey, Alan. yes. Real quick, uh, there's a little Zendex pop up kind of just blocking a chunk of that. Um, can you just kind of move that to a separate screen or just? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I want to see the full. There we go. Perfect. You got it? You. Okay. Fantastic. Um, like I said, you can either do them one by one or, you know, one, two, three, whatever contacts you have, or you can actually um, up here at the top, you can actually, um, well, I'm out. let me back up a little bit. I'm sorry about that. That's on the next screen. So like I said, if you want to add a client, just simply click the add key and enter your information, just as it is right there. And I'll close that out. And then I'll show you the second way to do that. Uh, you can actually upload contacts by CSV, a CSV file. Uh, for example, if you have it in a spreadsheet or something like that. And we've even included a template on here, right down here at the bottom, that you can use, uh, have the standard fields, first name, last name, street address, city, state, zip, so on and so on. And you just simply click on choose the file and then you can upload that uh, if you want to. The second way that you can uh, add the contacts is actually through the engage button. And it's basically the same thing. You can click on invite and all you have to do is type in the client's name. For example, I've got one here. That's myself. And that's the very simple way to do it. And then click on send. And of course, for that one, I've already invited it. I invited myself. <laughs> and we'll do a resend. So that's a very simple way to go in and set your contacts up. But like I said, before you use engage, you have to have the contacts there and then you invite the contacts. Uh, and what we're gonna do in just a few minutes is uh, one of my coworkers, Mandy Dennis, is gonna show you a uh, PowerPoint that we had set up because it's, it's hard to jump back and forth and show what I'm typing here and then what the client receives. So that's what we wanna show you is what message what email the client receives. And uh, actually, Mandy, if you're ready, uh, I can turn it over to you. Yeah, no problem. Alan, before you get out of that, do you mind mm -hmm. going back to that invite button there? Uh, where you're at? Yeah, Not up there at the top. And then yes. actually click on that preview message there. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, so basically, like Alan said, this is what the message will look like um, that will come to your client once they're invited to the portal. 
And so from here, I'm going to take it over and pretend I'm actually the client and what the experience is on their side. Cool. Okay, then I'll release the screen. Ooh, technical difficulty here, but I'll stop sharing. <laughs> All right, Mandy. All right, good. <laughs> All yours. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Let me get this full screen for you. So basically, once your client receives that email, they click on the link. This is what it's going to look like on their side. Uh, they're going to click the link and basically going to be taken to this page to sign up. So once they sign up, then they're going to be um, given this message that they are going to check their email. It's going to be a confirmation email that they're going to receive. And so once, basically, this is just showing a uh, copy of what that email looks like. So once they get this confirmation email, they will hit confirm email. And once they have done that, then they are ready to start using the portal. So once they log into the portal the first time, they have two different options. If they're interested in buying or renting a property, they can select that. They also have the option to see their home's value if they're interested in selling their house. Today, we're gonna really just concentrate on the buying and renting side. So if they choose the option of buying and renting, the system's gonna prompt them to answer three different questions. And so the reason why I really like this part of the portal is if you just, um, if you not really worked with this particular client, maybe you've not set them up on a safe search yet, maybe you said, you know, hey, this person has approached you, they would like to uh, start working with you maybe as their buyer's agent, then by sending them the link to the portal, they're going to go ahead and they're going to answer these questions. And so you're going to see the answers to their questions on your side of Remind under that engage section there. So even if I've not worked with this person, at least I have answers to these questions. So I have a little bit of background before I contact them to further, you know, figure out what it is that they're looking for, what criteria that I need to help them with. So you'll see the questions are what areas are they interested in? They'll be prompted, what is their price range? And then how soon are they looking to move? So once they answer those questions, again, if you have not set them up on a safe search or were shared any properties to them through a cart, of course, if you do both of those options, saving a search and also sharing properties through a cart, they will see all of those properties within the portal once you have them connected on the portal. But even if I've not worked with this person yet, the system picks up on the criteria that they entered and at least that they have criteria matches. At least they have something to look at when they log into the portal by answering those questions. So from there, once the client gets into the portal, they can actually, there's an option here to discover or to search, and they can actually start their own search within the portal. So for instance, this is just an example of a search. If you guys have used Remind yourself as agents, you'll notice that this looks very familiar to what the search looks like on your side of things as well. So at the top, they're able to, again, it picks up on the criteria they put in. So for instance, this was Fort Worth that they were looking within. They can also come up here and they can also type in things such as address, a city, a zip code, a neighborhood. Even if they have MLS numbers, they can search that way as well. They can search, of course, for for sale or for lease. Um, the type of home, of course, the price and bedrooms and baths. So they have all those options. But what's cool too, is they have the ability to use the layers just like you guys do on Remind. So for instance, if they're not that familiar with this particular area, maybe they're moving to the area, they're just not sure you know, where they want to move. This way they can go in and they can do their own exploration. So with property values, you can see they can find out in a particular area, you know, what property values are. They can do the same thing with ownership time so they can figure out, you know, once someone moves there, how long did they normally stay in that particular area? And other ways they can search too, they have the map tools that's available. So if they wanted to do a radius around a certain area, especially, you know, 
We always have those folks who come in that they want to be close maybe to where they work or maybe their children's school, that type of thing. So they could go in, pinpoint that on the map, and then draw a radius around there to see what properties are available currently. And then again, they can save this search. So the client can go in, they can save their own search, and then they can set it up so they're notified by email, you know, daily, weekly, um, however that may be, they can actually set that up. So when new matches come onto the market, they will be notified by email and that will prompt them to log into their portal. So just for example, some of the uh, some of the criteria that they will find or they will see once they click on a specific property. So they'll be able to scroll through all the photos there. We also provide a mortgage um, calculator here as well. So if they're interested in this property, they can play around with the different figures. You know, what are they gonna maybe possibly offer for this property? What's the monthly expenses? So it automatically puts those monthly expenses in there, such as, you know, the taxes, if there's any homeowners association dues, that type of thing. And then it calculates the cash that they would need at closing as an estimate. So again, they can play around with that depending on how much that they're gonna put down, what their interest rates is. And it gives them at least an idea of what type of cost that they're looking at to purchase a home. Other things that they're gonna be able to see within this screen is public record information. So they're gonna be able to see the tax bill, um, what that normally runs. Um, as far as what the, uh, the assessed value is on that property. They will be able to see key stats as well. So this is information that comes from public record and from the MLS. And then they can do things such as they can favorite a property. So you also see the demographics. It does show the demographics of the specific area they're looking within, but you'll also notice over here to the side that they have the option to favorite properties. So of course, whatever they're doing within the portal, you're gonna be able to track that activity on your side of things. So they can mark a property as a favorite. They can share these properties out, um, copy the link, send it to their family members, ask them what they think about the property. And they also have the ability to select a time that they would like to see the property. So they could come in, they could say, I want to see this in person, pick the times and the date that they would like to see that. Now you will be notified, of course, by email that your client is asking for a uh, showing on that particular property at that time of date. So really the portal just makes it super easy for your clients to come in to communicate with you in one spot. So instead of them having to pick up their phone to text you or to call you or send you an email, they can communicate directly to you with this type of thing directly through the client portal. So if someone has decided that they want to see a specific property, again, you will receive an email that will look very similar to this. Basically, it's gonna tell you um, who, what client that is and what time that they would like to see what property. So on your side of things, once you start inviting people to the portal and they start working within the portal, you're going to see their activity under the engage button um, like Alan showed you guys. So once you have someone that has uh, signed up for your portal, you'll be able to see all of those. They all become leads here under the engage section. For, exam for example, if we look at this particular Harry home buyer, I know original name. Um, so once you once you click onto their profile there or their lead, then it's going to give you information such as how long have they been registered with Remind. Um, if they have created a saved search, you're going to be able to see that here as well. Clicking through the info, so again, those questions they answered at the very beginning. Initially, when they signed up for the portal, you're going to see the answers to those questions. Again, to me, this is very helpful, especially if I've not had a lot of communication with this client yet. At least if I'm looking at Harry's profile, I can see what type of home he's looking for, um, what budget he's looking within, and then the time frame ASAP. So that's my indication that I need to call this guy as soon as possible because he is looking to move very soon. 
And then as far as looking under favorites, we can click under favorites. We can figure out what type of properties that they're looking at. Again, sometimes it's hard with clients. We all know that um, clients change their mind. They may tell you, they give you a list of criteria, but then when you start looking to see what they're looking at, as far as their saved searches or what they're marking as favorites, the properties that's their favorites in the portal, sometimes you kind of get a different feeling. And so this is a great way for you to really find out what type of properties these clients are looking for. Then you can also see if they've shared any properties out. So if I'm very interested in this and I want to share this out to my family members, Again, I would be really looking at that as an agent, like, okay, they must be really interested in this property. They are now sharing, sharing that with their family members. And then under saved searches, again, this is going to show you any searches that they have created on, with on, within, their, within the portal their self. So again, I can see this. I can see what he's looking for. Um, so again, I can see how that matches up with the criteria that my client has given me. And so basically that is it as far as um, how simple it is to use our portal. Um, so hopefully that was helpful for you guys. That was great, Mandy. Thank you so much. Um, you know, want to touch on a couple of couple things that kind of came in just general when we talk about client experience, you know, different than the one that we've historically had in Matrix and still remains there, but we want to do and why we have Remind here to show this as kind of a beginning steps is, you know, we want to be able to deliver your you and, you know, your clients through you uh, just a little bit more of a dynamic, modern uh, client portal. And we think Remind is, is delivering that and will continue to deliver that. And, you know, best of all, similar, as I touched on with Remind, uh, I'm sorry, with RPR, they're a partner that are, are very nimble and, and working with us and, and getting y'all's feedback, giving it to them and really trying to to build this, this platform and this client portal experience specifically to, uh, to be something that, you know, you can set up, set up within there and maybe wow your clients a little bit more. Um, so the feedback in the chat has been very, very helpful to hear. Um, and uh, a couple of things to get those contacts added. You, Matrix does make it easy to export as a CSV, as you saw through Alan's demo, you can import that into the system. So not an not a automatic pull in, but a couple of steps there to get in there. And really the takeaway is we just encourage you all to, to really try to embrace this newer technology as we have a little bit more of a closer relationship with Remind. And uh, we will have a ton of training as well. So RPR is coming up bunched in December. Remind has been rolling along. Uh, they're going to have a pretty good update here coming, coming pretty soon uh, before the end of the year just to get... Um, Again, just to continue building these tools and, and we're working so closely with you all to, to get your feedback and give it to them. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and uh, I know we didn't necessarily get to all the questions. We're right at the hour. So I do want to wrap up as Caitlin. Thank you for playing Q&A uh, Guru and, and Zar today. Uh, we do have those that came in. And if there's follow up there, we will we'll absolutely make note of that. We're here. You know, you know our support schedule. We have support at abor.com. Remind and RPR have their support channels. Um, so follow up with us and, and we'll plan to follow up with you as well so we can make sure you have clarity. It's the power hour for a reason. We go super quickly and, and really in depth in very quick amount of time, but uh, there's a lot still to learn and we offer you those resources there. So to wrap up, uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. We hope you gained some new tips and strategies to plug into your business. We'll have a whole new lineup of Power Hours for 2023. We're not going anywhere. Uh, we love this, this material. You all always come out you know, and just and support us with it, really engage with us. It is absolutely, to be a little cliche, it's the holiday season. I'll say heartwarming to see you all uh, give us the time and attention. I know it's very busy and uh, we really do appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you on the other side of the holiday season power hour wise, but keep an eye out for those trainings. In the meantime, abor.com, all of our classes on there. There is a ton coming up. Encourage you to get in there and um, always have to plug, keeping an eye out for a feedback survey. Let us know what went well, what you really loved, what you'd like to see improvements on. Let us know products and services, anything like that, that could potentially be topics for next year. We stay very nimble with this uh, material. And there will also be a link to the event recording sent out. You'll get it first. It'll eventually be put on the message of the day, but we like to hook up our attendees who took the time first so you can get right in there. Uh, thank you all so much and have a great rest of the week.